Hello, 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 everybody. It is I, J Malls of J Malls Gaming, here today with why you and I honestly should not be afraid to get hyped. Because honestly, I feel like there's too much negativity and pessimism in the games industry nowadays, especially online. And there's this feeling where, if you're a critic, right, I feel like this kind of disseminates to a lot of other mediums, especially like stuff like food critique or like movie critique or cinema critique, where it's kind of cool to be negative. And I just never... I understood why. Because... There's this increasing normalization and even the glorification of pessimism. And personally, I'm not a big fan of that. But I do understand it. People don't want to be disappointed. And honestly, that's understandable. If you hype up a game too much, you open the possibility of being let down in the end. But honestly, in my opinion, that kind of defeats some of the fun of a new game coming out. Especially one that you really care about if it's from a beloved series for you. It's important to know when to feel hyped, in my opinion. And when to ignore something. If it's a new game from a new studio that I never really paid attention to before. At least a new studio for me. Yeah, it's okay to go in with a healthy dose of... Not necessarily pessimism, but realism. And not elevate a game to these lofty expectations. Like we did a lot with Cyberpunk. Granted, a lot of that was on CD Projekt Red. For underperforming. Having really uh, too many bugs on release. And having subpar content over overall. But... Let's not try and pretend as if people tr didn't try and hype the game up to be the next coming of the divine and honestly there's a there's a spectrum to this right if you overhype a game and expect it to be the next big thing to be the greatest game of all time then it's really hard realistically for any game to meet those lofty expectations and that leads you the consumer it basically just means that you can quickly sour on it and revert to what I'm about to talk about. Where, if you go into a game with low expectations, then the flaws are exaggerated. But this is also the same if you overhype a game for no good reason. Because once you go in, once you make that transition from thinking the game's going to be great to this game is not living up to my expectations, then you start to notice the flaws ever more. And become ever more present. Even subconsciously, or even sometimes consciously, where you're looking for flaws. Whereas, if you had gone in the game with, an, with a healthy dose of optimism, those same negatives probably wouldn't be as bad as you thought they were. Not wanting to be disappointed is one thing, but also making it harder to find joy in things, I don't feel that's healthy either. Let's talk about a good example. Kingdom Hearts 3. People were freaking hyped for this game. For good reason, because it's from a trusted developer-ish with Square Enix. Well, trusted developer, in my opinion. From a long series where a lot... Where well, the game has a ton of diehard fans. And a lot of people that adore that Kingdom Hearts series. And will basically just consume anything so long as that name is attached to the product. It's not a problem to be... Quote unquote, a fan of something. The problem is when you elevate your expectations to unrealistic heights. Sure, from what I've seen, Kingdom Hearts 3 has flaws to it. I'm not going to deny that. But at the same time... Going into that game release, people expected that game to be Game of the Year. And people expected that game to be one of their great favorite games of all time. Is that fair? That's up to interpretation. And that's up to debate. But 
you would be hard pressed to make a valid argument where having those lofty expectations didn't play a f didn't have a hand to play in a lot of people's negative reaction to Kingdom Hearts 3. Sure, it has some fans of it. There's a I've always seen a lot of disappointment around that title, particularly. And honestly, I speak from a place of understanding. Because I kind of did the opposite way back when with Skyrim. Yeah, Skyrim's a freaking meme now because that game will not freaking die. It just keeps getting ported to everything. But remember before Skyrim came out how hyped that game was? Everybody was looking forward to Skyrim. You saw commercials for this game everywhere. And everybody was talking about it. And I never played an Elder Scrolls game. I was an FPS kid back then. I'm like, what the heck is this game? This game does not look that good. Why is it so hyped up? And I went into it with negative expectations. I went into that game thinking I was going to hate it or that it was going to be overhyped and that people should be more talking about stuff like Halo Reach or something. But then I played it. And I had that opposite effect of what I talked about before where you can go into a game with too high of an expectation and then, over the course of it, transition to finding the flaws in everything and over-elevating the, the impact of those flaws. I went into it the opposite way, where I went into it expecting to find flaws, and then I found a bunch of stuff I really enjoyed about it. Sure, the combat sucked, but everything else was pretty freaking good. I loved the storylines, I loved the characters, I loved the quest lines. I love exploring the dungeons and all that. I just, loved, I just loved exploring the world of Skyrim. And honestly, that's one of the games that got me into RPGs, really, when I look back on it. And sure, it's a bit of an opposite reaction to what I'm talking about overall with it's okay to be hyped. But that's an example of I could have had more enjoyment from that title had I just gone in not being so pessimistic. And if I had just gone in being optimistic. An example of where this worked for me I have two of them, and they're both Final Fantasy related, so sue me, I love Final Fantasy games. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Sure, not everybody's reaction to this game was positive. I freaking adored this game, and I, and I was hyped for it beforehand, because Final Fantasy VII was one of the first retro-style JRPGs I've ever played. I spent a summer just playing Final Fantasy VI and Final Fantasy VII, like back-to-back, -back, and I loved both games. Final Fantasy VII particularly. Just because the setting resonated with me more. And when I saw the remake, I'm like, yeah, this game looks really freaking cool. I wonder what they're going to do, like, what's the direction they're going to go? It's going to be like a one-for-one -one remake. Oh, okay, so they're going to just have the Midgar section be the game and expand on those elements. Okay. Okay, I can see that. I'm, But... I wasn't going to go in overly pessimistic and saying, you need to be a one-for-one -one recreation of the original game. I have the original game. I don't need you to re-release something that's already borderline perfect. Make something new. I'm okay with that. So long as you're being respectful to the original. And I felt that the remake was being respectful to the original. So I went in with a healthy dose of optimism. I was really looking forward to the game. I really liked the trailers. I liked all... I liked the lead-up to... Final Fantasy VII Remake. And then I got the demo, which is... My reaction to the demo is actually on this channel, by the way. Back before I had a good mic. And then... I think it was before I had a good mic. The current mic, at least. And I love the demo. I'm like, yeah, the combat really has a lot of potential to it. It's pretty fun. The characters feel unique. The combat feels like a way better version of Final Fantasy XV. Yeah, there's a lot to like here. And the game is freaking beautiful. Cool. I was, I was content. And I was looking forward to Final Fantasy VII Remake. And then it came out. And shameless plug my entire playthroughs on this channel. I freaking adored this game as well as my review. The game blew me away. So I was able to find joy and entertainment out of a product before and after it released. And in my opinion, as a consumer, that's just better. Because I knew going in, I was managing my expectations, waited to see more gameplay. I played the demo even. And I'm like, yes, this is a product that I'm probably going to enjoy. So I went into it with a mindset 
to enjoy an optimistic mindset. So while a lot of people lambasted this game, because there's a very popular meme going around at the time of Final Fantasy VII Remake's release, right? Remember the freaking dorm meme that was like stupid? It was just, when I first played Final Fantasy VII Remake, I didn't even notice it. I wasn't looking for stuff to complain about. I saw a door and sure it had bad textures. I opened it and moved on. I was more interested in the stuff behind the door. I cared more about that. I cared more about the game itself than focusing on some random door to find some point of critique. I was focused more on enjoying the experience. So I found little things all around the world, such as dialogue, such as how NPCs interact with each other, such as little interactions in the combat, such as little animations of the enemies that I just personally enjoyed, including the minigames. And it elevated my experience, and I had a more enjoyable time with it, because I wasn't looking for the negatives. I wasn't looking, I wasn't seeking them out, I was just seeking out a good time. Now for the other Final Fantasy project that I'm looking forward to currently, like we're, in this, we're still in the process of advertisement, and the game hasn't even released yet, is Endwalker for Final Fantasy XIV. I'm a big fan of Final Fantasy XIV, and that studio has not given me a reason to be doubtful of them. So I'm looking forward to Endwalker. So I'm finding enjoyment from that project, from that expansion, even before it releases, and to me that has value. Because it's okay to be happy, it's okay to be excited for something new. Especially for when it's from something you trust to be a good product in the end. Sure, I think it's okay to manage your expectations because after Shadowbringers, it's really hard to live up to the, what Shadowbringers did, story-wise at least. And sure, maybe some people are putting unreasonable expectations on Endwalker, but I'm going to go into it with an optimistic mindset. And sure, maybe it's not the story finale that I was wanting, or that I expected. But I'm okay with them telling me something different. With them telling me something new. Because that writing team hasn't given me a reason to doubt them yet. When they've made twists and turns that I was hesitant on at first. Especially early on in the story. They turned out to be some of my most favorite parts of it. So I feel instead of going into it pessimistic. To like compensate for all the hype. I'm going to go in with optimism, optimism, and it's okay to be hyped. Like I've been saying ad nauseum throughout this video, let's bring the freaking hype back for games. Because it's okay to have fun, and it's okay to look forward to something. Don't, but it's also okay to be realistically optimistic about something. If it's, from, if it's a game that... Is from a studio, like I said earlier, if, if it's a game from a studio I don't play a lot of, or for a genre I don't play a lot of, I'm not going to overhype it. Sure, I really like CD Projekt Red. I was really looking forward to Cyberpunk. But I was willing to wait to make sure it came out okay. Because I had questions about it. I was looking forward to it overall. But once I saw that it wasn't going to live up to what it was advertised, I just moved on to other things. Instead of focusing on the negativity, I'd rather uplift the, the companies and studios and developers that are doing it right. It's why I didn't make a bunch of takedown videos about World of Warcraft, for instance. Sure, I had pessimistic videos about it and critique, but I didn't go on ragging the, ragging the freaking developers or ad nauseum. No. I no longer enjoyed the game, so I moved on, found other things that I enjoyed, and found other games from other studios where I could let myself get hyped for them pre-release, and go and then play the game and still be hyped. You just have to be realistic. And I feel once you are able to achieve that balance, you can find way more pleasure and way more better experiences in the games industry overall 
And that's really my two cents on this topic. So thank you for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. If you liked the video and you want to see more content, I know I would appreciate it. Stay safe out there, everybody. Have a great day. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody.